Welcome back to another Targets in Focus from Duke Scopy TV, where we get an insight into the thoughts behind some of the projections from some of the world's leading currency strategists. Today I'm joined on the line by Shant Movzessian from the Market Analyst Forecast in London. Thank you very much for joining me today, Shant. Let's start with the trader's favourite pair, the Euro Dollar. Now, of course, there was a positive US jobs report at the end of last week, and Merkel and Sarkozy are indicating they may have a deal on the Eurozone. What things do you think are going to drive this pair going forward, and where do you see it heading in the short, mid and long term? The US data was, was indeed positive, but it doesn't really confirm a, a positive trend of improving, improving growth figures. So uh, one set of figures does not make a, does not make a recovery. So uh, on that front, we have, to, we have to be very, very cautious. Uh, and in terms of the euro positives uh, that we can gleaned from, from this, this weekend's meeting between Sarkozy and Merkel. They're in agreement about something, which is a, a start, but it really doesn't, uh, doesn't really establish anything concrete in terms of providing a credible uh, solution to the, to the Eurozone crisis. I mean, we have Greece um, uh, falling short of all sorts of targets and you know, requesting more money. Uh, uh, so we're, we're really on no no uh, nearer a sort of uh, a credible solution to, to sort of warrant a, a base in euro dollar. It's still going down, still plenty more room on the downside. This is just a technical recovery as far as I'm concerned with the uh, prima facie uh, news that you know, Merkel and Sarkozy agreed to provide a comprehensive package. I mean, when pressed on details, they said it's not the time to discuss details. Well, it's been a very long time too, <laughs> to, uh, in which to wait for some details. And um, while some may be very optimistic on it. I think it's just a, a recovery which will uh, give sellers an opportunity to sell at better levels. Thank you very much for that, Shant. Heading south now to Australia, do you think we're likely to see a rate cut there before the end of the year? And where do you see the Aussie dollar heading in the one, three and 12 month time frames? The Aussie dollar um, against the US dollar has been a sort of good time currency in the sense that, you know, when, when things are going well, um, global uh, demand is is rife obviously in being a, a strong uh, commodity exporting nation they will naturally do well and they have done uh, over the sort of over the last few months uh, six months a year uh, in this in what i've seen to be uh, to be in a relief rally because of its high yield the australian dollar has been a a, a, a fantastic currency to hold your cash in uh, yielding Effectively, four and a half percent of the of the base rate for you if you take the sort of uh, overnight rate, um, and so there's been a large positioning uh, in the Australian dollar. And what we're seeing is as risk comes off the table, when people repatriate, they repatriate out of the the currencies that they've uh, they've held in um, for positive growth, and that uh, even though the rates are still relatively high uh, compared to elsewhere, it's the highest in most developed nations. Uh, we see that wholesale uh, reversing in the market, pulling Aus Australian dollar lower, and uh, there's plenty more downside to go. I mean, we see it's back up 50, uh, well, 0.5 um, short of parity at the moment, but uh, it's still seen as a sell purely on that basis. I mean, you, you know, you're, you've got to pick in pick your times to trade, obviously, with a heavy, heavy uh, differential against you, but uh, it's it's basically a sell now. There's nothing to suggest it won't go down to a 90, and there's nothing to suggest that we won't get a rate cut. Finally, then, on Japan, what impact do you think the strength of the currency is having on the economy there, and where do you see the dollar-yen heading going forward? You know, there's nothing to stop the BOJ from the smoothing operations, as it were, to, to halt the fall. They've always said that they've no no real problem with absolute levels. It's the it's the speed of the levels attained in the period of time they attain it that it's that's been the problem. So, uh, you know, it's been around 76 and a half. Uh, well, I can't remember when the last time was, but certainly three or four weeks at least. So, uh, it's uh, it's you know, it's a success on that on that basis. Uh, my only cons my only uh, well, not so much concern, but certainly people, the exporters uh, who are selling on the top side are seen quite aggressive to sell uh, anywhere near 77. Um, but as I say, the Bank of Japan seem uh, equal to it, and uh, they seem to be doing a very good job of holding it um, you know, above 76. I think 70, 75 and a half, and you'll start seeing a bit more aggressive action on their front. I, mean, I think 75 will be a big... Uh, trigger level for them to sort of step in uh, and so um, that seems to be a, a, an interesting level should we reach it but as I say at the moment we, you know we look pretty well cushioned in the sort of mid 76s uh, and only a severe bout of risk aversion will will probably see the yen push up uh, higher still. 
Thanks very much for that, Shant. Great insight there from one of the world's leading Forex analysis organizations. There'll be more targets in focus this week on Duke Scopy TV, so stay tuned.